To Down the Forest Path, a seasonal knitting podcast. First of all, a warm welcome to everyone who has subscribed since the last episode and who has joined us here on this channel. Since there are so many of you, I feel like a very brief reintroduction is in order. My name is Nicola. I am a knitter, weaver and embroiderer. Basically, I like to do all things crafty. Um, but I'm mostly focusing on knitting. I live in the south of Germany. I care a lot about knitting in tune with the seasons and I hope to bring you some joy for the seasons of the year going on around us and some inspiration and ideas for your knitting project and also just a moment of calm to just hang out with me, chat about knitting a bit, have a cup of tea I'm having a cup of tea right here that is still way too hot to drink. It's a super gloomy day here. It is grey, rainy, sleety in the morning. It snowed and then it turned into this this rain that didn't like let the snow stay on the ground. So everything is now brown and sludgy and grey. So I decided I would have a blood orange tea and also to put on this nice springtime in the Shire scented candle to bring a little bit of spring feeling into this gloomy grey day. I would say let's just start to talk about recent knitting adventures. I realized after I had filmed this episode so I'm just speaking from an hour in the future, that all of the patterns featured in this episode are actually free patterns. So this is a free pattern episode and I hope you can find some inspiration for nice patterns to use for your projects from this. So I think this episode could rightfully be called Midnight Extravaganza because I went on a bit of a mitten and fingerless glove knitting binge since the last episode. I think that is because at the moment the weather here can't decide whether it wants to be winter or spring. So we're stuck between the seasons. And it's way too warm now to wear my thrumped mittens, which I love wearing in the winter time. But it's also too cold for me to not wear anything on my hands because they tend to get really dry if I do that when it's still that cold outside. So I have quite a lot of finished mittens to share with you today and gloves, um, three pairs of them in fact, and I'm very excited to talk about them for a bit. But before I do that, I should point out in the background of this video, I have decided to just always put up one of my shorts because I do not have a, a mannequin or another cool way to display finished knit objects apart from on my person where especially a lace shawl can be really hard to see. Um, so I decided to always put one up in the background and this is my Rainshine shawl. That is a lace knitting pattern by Boo Knits and the yarn I used for it is Vol Elfe. I think it was her merino silk mix. The colorway is called Irish Moss and I feel like that's quite accurate and I used some size six beads on it which now you can't see very well because they are relatively tiny but they fit the shawl very well they're this pale jd green that just blends in very seamlessly i really liked knitting this because it's quite geometrical as you can see um, you always have this line running through the center so you can't go wrong that easily because you always have that as a form of orientation if you're confused about the pattern if you've maybe like made a stitch too much accidentally or so you won't get lost here and it's also quite quick knit i think it was 360 meters or something like that that i used so definitely doable in a relatively short amount of time and i think i will actually probably knit this again um, maybe out of silk this spring or summer because 
it's just a nice thing to wear it's a nice size as well i've worn it on a few hikes recently and i really did not regret it it's it's nice to wrap it around your neck it's not too bulky it keeps you warm but not hot so it's definitely wearable in quite a lot of different situations so without further ado let's get right into the mitten extravaganza with this first pair of fingerless gloves that i finished i showed these to you in the last episode where i had finished knitting them and i wasn't too happy with the look of it because it's this quite fuzzy mohair fabric and uh, I felt like it was making my arms look like Wookiee arms in its natural state, which I can still show you if I put it on the wrong way around. So I asked for a bit of embroidery inspiration for it and you were kind enough to provide some in the comments below the video. In the end, I decided to embroider Lily of the Valley on these mittens and I have a few clips about the progress of how I went about it, which I will show to you in a minute, but first I should probably put them on and show them to you how they look like when I wear them. So you have seen that. There we go. So as you can see, here is the Lily of the Valley embroidery and I decided on a whim to make the Lily of the Valley flowers in stump work which is an embroidery technique where you use 3D elements. This was in fact super easy even though it might look a tiny bit complicated because essentially what I did was I covered a bead in embroidery floss and then made these tiny little tips on it there is a super good tutorial for that that I will link below. There is this amazing embroidery artist on YouTube who keeps putting out really educational tutorials. And this was super easy to follow with that tutorial. I would have had no idea how to do this specific thing. Otherwise, I'm quite good at embroidery, but I've never done this kind of flower. So if you're interested in doing the same, then I can really recommend you to check that video out and it is linked in the description below. So this is what it looks like and now let's maybe go over to a few clips on the whole process. If you're interested then this is not exactly a tutorial but it should give you a really good idea about what you would need to do and it should kind of be easy to follow as well. So floriography is the specific Victorian system of symbolism around flowers that ascribes a specific meaning to every flower that you then can put together in a bouquet and a bouquet then has a kind of hidden message for the recipient. People have always tried to like charge up their environment with symbolism and meaning. So it's not an exclusively Victorian thing, but that is an age where specifically around flowers, this kind of symbolism went a bit haywire. And there is like really good literature on the topic. There are quite a few books. I specifically like this one, it's called Floriography. It's by Jessica Rue. It's a modern book and it's an illustrated guide to the Victorian language of flowers. So it has these gorgeous illustrations of different flowers and different plants and details their meaning and also the origin of that meaning and gives you ideas of which other plants to put in a bouquet to symbolize a specific meaning. I thought I would sit down with a nice mug of tea and pick something to embroider on my fingerless mittens. And I did pick something because I kept gravitating back towards the Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley symbolizes the return of happiness and that really resonated with me because I always saw them as a symbol of optimism and resilience and hope. They just make you happy to look at these little tiny bell-shaped flowers 
I just completely adore them. And I'm always trying to stay positive and optimistic about things, but sometimes I can use a little reminder. And because of that, I thought this was a perfect flower to embroider on my fingerless gloves and then look at during the day to kind of remind myself to stay positive about everything around me. So that is the plant I picked and that is what I will embroider on my fingerless gloves. First of all, I drew the flower that I wanted to embroider and I made sure to keep the drawing relatively simple and also that it had quite visible outlines. I then used some water-soluble transfer fabric and traced these outlines using a water-soluble fabric marker. I then whip-stitched this fabric onto the top of my fingerless glove, exactly where I wanted the embroidery to be placed. And when I made sure that it was in place, I then used green cotton threads to embroider the leaves and the stem of my Lily of the Valley. And I used a darker green for shading and a lighter green for the highlights. Then I made the little Lily of the Valley blossoms and I followed a tutorial on YouTube, which I will link below. Essentially, what you're going to do is you are using a big glass bead with a relatively big hole and you will go through that hole with white embroidery floss again and again and again until your bead is basically covered all the way around. And then you're going to make the little tips of the petal by doing tiny knots at the top of the bead. And I think you can see me doing this here in the video a bit, but if you want a very clear, detailed video tutorial of it, check out the video I have linked below. The channel puts out beautiful embroidery work anyway, so it's always worth checking out. Then I attached these embroidered petals to the glove by just sewing them on quite carefully. And now it was time to get rid of the transferring foil. So I pulled out the whip stitch that I had used to stitch the transferring fabric in place. And I kind of cut out as much as I could with scissors because this specific one that I'm using is not perfect. It tends to kind of stiffen the fabric a bit when it gets dissolved. So I wanted to make sure I got rid of as much as possible before um, putting the water soluble fabric into water to actually get rid of it permanently. So once I had cut out the outline, I then used a big bowl and placed my gloves in that. And as you can see, the fabric basically dissolves immediately. It's like putting cotton candy in water. And I made sure to rinse them out quite properly and then put them on a tea towel to squeeze out any excess water. I kind of rolled them in the tea towel a bit carefully since I use cotton thread for this embroidery that should be quite doable because cotton thread is not quite so incredibly sensitive so you don't have to be scared about agitating it too much when you're doing this. And then I put my fingerless gloves onto mitten blockers for them to dry. And here you can see a few shots of the finished product. I hope this video was helpful. The pattern for these mittens is the Cream Mittens on Ravelry. I knitted out of onion kitzel mohair. This is my favorite mohair yarn, held double with Wild Atlantic yarns. I don't really remember which one of the yarn qualities it was. It was a 100% merino one. Um, and I think the colorway was called Pebble. So this was a stash busting project for sure. It used up about 20 grams of the mohair and 20 grams of the merino. And I still have some of the merino left over now, even though I was trying to use it all up. So I will have to 
use it to maybe make a strap and a shawl or something like that um, so that I have fully finished it. The embroidery floss I use is by a small manufacturer from the UK. Um, it's called The Very Yarns and they produce a variety of silk and cotton threads that I absolutely adore. I have a few here actually. Um, I already took them out for my next embroidery project. So let's see what we have. Yes, these are a few yellows because I wanted to embroider daffodils really soon. Um, they make both cotton threads and silk threads. And they also have some worsted wool threads for embroidery as well. For this, I used only the cotton. That has the very simple reason that I do not like to embroider clothes with threads that make the clothes harder to wash than they would already be. So these mittens are kind of okay for washing. I can hand wash them. They are a bit... They tend to, like, of course, because of the mohair and the merino, they might out if I just put them in the dryer or something like that, or in the washing machine on high tumble, but they're not super hard to care for. And because they go on the hands, where you also sometimes spill stuff, um, I like my, my handwear to be easy to wash. So I used cotton to embroider this, because cotton is also fairly easy to wash. Their silk threads are incredibly beautiful and also quite cheap, actually. Um, so if you're interested in embroidery in general, then I do really recommend you have a look at their website. For example, this here is one of their silks. It is the number 72. This is their thickest thread quality in the color gold. Come on, focus. Let's help the camera. The thread is quite thick, so they manufacture the silk threads in a variety of thicknesses as well. You can get them in a very thin strength for really fine embroideries or in this thick strength for larger embroideries or more rustic embroideries. Then their cotton threads, they also have in different qualities and these mercenarized cotton threads here, this is in the color apricot, um, are what is closest to traditional embroidery threads you might get from, for example, Prim or Anchor or any of the big embroidery thread manufacturers. And the worsted wool is basically a single thread, but of course you can just double it up. Um, this is the worsted wool thread and all of these are gorgeous. I really love this manufacturer. I have bought a lot from them in the past. I'm kind of really stocked up on embroidery threads at the moment, so I don't need to get so much more. They also do these gorgeous advent calendars. Some of them for the cotton yarn, some of them mixed with the silk and oh, they're amazing. I have gotten one for the last few years, I think. And if you're ever looking for a nice little gift for yourself or a Christmas gift for a dear friend who likes to embroider, then look no further. Um, that is definitely the way to go. So those are the threads I used for the embroidery. I also used some glow-in-the-dark beads. You can't see that they're glow-in-the-dark right here. You just have to trust me on this. The effect is not super strong, but it's kind of cool. If you go from a light room into a dark room, then you can definitely see them. I also embroidered this on a fabric stabilizer that washed away, but the specific fabric stabilizer kind of changes the color of the thread a little bit and makes it a tiny bit more shiny than it was would otherwise be. I actually do not like that that much because I like my embroideries to look kind of rustic but it didn't bother me in this case as well. So, yep, 
here we are, Lily of the Valley mittens, or Lily of the Valley fingerless gloves more accurately. What was the cost point of this project? In this case, the cost point for me was zero because I had all of this lying around at home. Um, if I would have made them from scratch and bought the materials, I think I would have managed to do this for about seven euros um, if I would have tried. So this is quite a cheap project. It's easy to make. I think it's a super cute gift. The embroidery did take me a few hours. I would say about like four to five hours and knitting the mittens maybe another four to five. So it's not super not time intense, but it's definitely doable if you're looking for a cute birthday present for a friend or something like that. And I just really love how springtimey these look. Even though I went with Lily of the Valley as the embroidery subject in the end, I really did appreciate the suggestions from the comments and they definitely inspired me to embroider something else in the future. I did want to, since we talked about flower symbolism right now, talk about the flower symbolism of the suggestions that I got because it's also quite cute. One of you suggested cherry blossoms and cherry blossoms have been seen as a symbol of hope because they blossom in spring, of beauty, of youth and also of impermanence and that you should kind of honor beautiful moments because they are fleeting. The same way that cherry trees only blossom for a few weeks of the year, you should appreciate the beauty of the world around you because it's always changing and you can't hold on to it, which I think is also a really nice reminder for us to really live in the moment a bit and enjoy the world around us. And another suggestion I got was primrose and primroses are also a symbol of spring because they bloom quite early and a symbol of hope because they come up so early in the year when winter is still kind of holding on to the world a little bit. So thank you for your suggestions and I hope you enjoyed this little excursion into Victorian flower symbolism um, and the inspiration behind this embroidery. And let's get over to the next finished object. And the next finished object is here and here. And these are the spring mittens. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. And these are just absolutely adorable. I am smitten with these. I have just worn them around the house because I love them so much and I'm quite proud of them. This is the first kind of like cell boost style mitten with this tip that I've ever knit in my life. So that makes me extra proud. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I can't take them off. I think I look a bit ridiculous. It's definitely too warm inside to wear mittens, but it's just, it's just so cute. These are knit out of the Drops Baby Merino yarn and the colors always change depending on which vendor you buy the yarn from. So um, this one was called Desert Rose and the bright color was their natural colorway. And as you can see, This pattern has beads or this pattern does not have beads but my mittens have beads and that is because I am lazy. I love color work with two colors. I do not love color work with three colors because the way I knit color work I have one color on that side of my knitting, one color on that side of my knitting, and then I basically knit continental with the one hand and English style with the other, so I can knit two colors at the same time 
without constantly like having to switch or the yarn getting tangled up and that is quite fast it's also quite easy to catch your floats with this method um, for the newer knitters who might be joining us floats are what happens on the inside of your color work project when you're knitting because you're not using your other color of yarn for a few stitches at a time you have this kind of strand of unused yarn going over from the last stitch where you used it to the first stitch where you're using it again. That can be a problem if that is a very long stretch because then you have all of these threads on the inside that your fingers might get tangled up in. So if there is quite a long stretch between you using a color, you might want to kind of wind one color around the other so it kind of ties it neatly in the back and that is called catching your floats. With the method I'm knitting color work that is super easy but that is super easy when I'm knitting it in two colors. If I'm knitting with three colors everything becomes horrible. I mean that's a slight exaggeration but it's just not as um, convenient. So what I have done is that I have replaced the third color in this pattern, which is a yellow for the center of these daisies with a bead, with a golden bead. And I think the effect is very nice. I think it looks very elegant and I'm quite happy with it. And I actually filmed how I did that so that you, if you're like me, if you try to avoid three color color work uh, whenever possible and you happen upon a pattern where you think hmm, this would actually look nice with the bead instead of the third color, you can also do it. So I will hand over to Knitting Nicola so she can show you how she did this. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to knit up to the stitch that is the center stitch of the flower but not including which is this one so this here is where we knit the center stitch of the flower last row and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tiny crochet hook and put a bead on it like so and then I'm going to slide the stitch off the left needle, put the bead over it. I'm trying to hold this as close to the camera as I can so you can see. And then we just put it back on the left needle. And we knit it. And then if you have a look, you can see that the center of the flower now has a tiny golden bead over it. So essentially you're trying to place your bead one row later than the stitch you wanted to go over. As you can see that was quite easy. It's not super hard to do and the effect is I think stunning. I am someone who is usually quite uh, happy with her finished objects in general but I have to say these are next level. I already dread the day that I might lose one of them or anything like that. Um, I hope these stay with me until I am very, very, very old. You might ask yourself which patterns are very well suited for just replacing the third color with beads. And basically it's every pattern where the third color is used more of like as an accent where it is not used so much and most of the time you are just carrying it around the knitting to have it pop up in certain places. So in this pattern it's mostly used for the centers of the flowers and on the inside but I don't miss it here so I didn't replace it with beads um, apart from in this little flower. So that was a perfect candidate for me. Uh, other good candidates might be something like a pattern that has animals in it and the third color is black to use 
for the eye of the animal then you might decide to just do it all in two color color work and just pop a bead over that stitch where you want the eye to be in anyway about the pattern and about the yarn let's talk about that for a little bit so the yarn i was super happy with this is the drops baby merino as i said it's quite a sturdy yarn it is super wash i think so it did stretch quite a bit when i blocked these mittens um i managed to shrink it down by immediately rolling it a bit in a in a tea towel to kind of get the moisture out and then putting it on mitten blockers and letting it air dry in a room that was quite drafty so it dried quite quickly um i'm super happy with how the colors held up the the blocking so i didn't block it super hot on purpose as, as i didn't put it in hot water because i was scared that this reddish pink would bleed into the white I used cold water for the blocking and it worked really well and the color didn't bleed at all and yeah it's it's not pilling much it looks quite nice the yarn is extremely cheap um, I'm really happy with this purchase and in fact I did buy some more drops baby merino because I was so happy with this which you will see in the acquisitions part of the podcast in a little bit so before we move on, let's talk quickly about the pattern. So I really like this pattern. I think the chart provided was super clear um, for the most part, with one exception. And I also think the instructions provided were quite clear. But, but, but this is not a beginner color work knitting pattern and it does not hold your hands. So I think it even says so explicitly in the pattern description and just to mention again, this is a free pattern, so I do not expect a super thorough instruction on how to knit mittens in general from it. Um, so I would recommend it to everyone who has already knit one or two pairs of collar work mittens or collar work in general and knows how it works. Someone who knows how to do left leaning and right leaning decreases and where to use them because it does have you figure out stuff for yourself a little bit the thumb placement is indicated by a red line in the pattern and yeah also with the thumb knitting it doesn't it doesn't super hold your hand so definitely best if you if you know your way around a bit of color work already by the time you do this i also had uh, an issue which might be due to my printer my printer is a big meanie but <laughs> essentially what happened was it printed out the like color of the flowers super close to the color of the background chart like where there are no stitches so in these decrease sections it was really hard for me to keep track of which row started with a decrease where this stitch would not exist or whether this was a white stitch um, because these two colors looked almost exactly the same in my printout and because i knit in the evening quite often i was constantly like hunching over it and going like is this gray or white I would recommend to kind of sit down before you start knitting this and maybe just look over the decreases at the top and in good light and just mark with a pencil which ones are stitches and which ones are, oh this has decreased, this stitch doesn't exist anymore. Apart from this, I did really really like this pattern. I think the motif is absolutely gorgeous. I think the palm is also super super cute especially with the tiny little flower at the top there something that i also realized while knitting this is that i do not like 
knitting color work in a really small circumference so the thumb here was a bit torturous for me and I think maybe next time I would just knit it in one single color but this is also quite cute to be honest so I don't know but that was actually the part where I was finished with my mitten basically like 95% but I was still going like oh do I actually want to finish this even though I'm really in love with it because knitting in the round with color work on this small circumference of just one finger is quite intense but I pushed through it and I think it was really worth that the end result is super pretty. Also something to keep in mind about this pattern is that this is a traditional color work mitten. So the thumb placement is not super ergonomical. You kind of have to find a good fit for your hand for this so it doesn't feel awkward. I do like to include cost points for my projects whenever I can because I like knitting to be a quite financially accessible and inclusive hobby for everyone who wants to do it. So these mittens were roughly a cost point of seven euros for me as well. I think I paid around three euros for each ball of the Drops Baby Merino and I needed two. I still have left over quite a bit. And I paid about like two to three euros for the beads, but I still have more than half of these beads left over. So this is a very cheap project if you want to not spend much money on it. Of course, there is no limit on the on the upper side. You can spend as much money on yarn as on a car if you want to. But this can be made quite cheaply. And I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous present for someone you really love. Maybe... This is a nice Mother's Day project for you. It also doesn't take forever to make, which is a plus point. So yeah, I can fully recommend this pattern. I can fully recommend the yarn and I can fully recommend replacing the third color with beads to make your life easier and your project faster. And let's move on to the third finished pair of fingerless gloves. These are the Pioneer Mittens. This is also a free pattern on Ravelry, which I will also link below. So this is the episode of free patterns. And these don't look so exciting on the first glance. They look a bit wrinkled and shriveled up. But let me tell you, the fit on these things is absolutely amazing. These are made for my spouse, who has bigger hands than me. So the fit is not quite as great, but I think it will be good enough to show you anyway. So here you can see where there's increases and then the thumb kind of comes off and it splits off. And oh my God, this sits so nicely on your hands. And it's really nice if you want to kind of type, which is why I made these because these are super nice to wear while you're typing on a keyboard, while you're playing the piano, while you're knitting or while you're reading a book. I used the Drops Baby Merino again for this. I still have some left over so the cost point for this pair of mittens is actually two euros. Please go and make them. It's it's incredible i when i was making them it took a tiny bit of time to wind my head around the way that the thumb increases worked and how the thumb would be split off but once i understood it was like oh my god this is going to fit so nicely this is going to sit so well and then i asked my spouse to you try them on i was like oh my god this is absolutely perfect this is perfection and because of that, yeah, I, I will endorse these wholeheartedly. And I actually knit these sitting in the dark while watching a TV show. Because once you get running on this pattern, it just keeps, keeps going. It's super smooth. It's just 
a fast project. I think you could probably make these in one or two evenings. I needed a tiny bit longer because I did other stuff in between, but my spouse had the mittens within, I don't know, four or five days of saying, oh, I get cold hands at the moment when I'm typing on my laptop. So yeah, go for it, definitely do. As I said, free pattern, can't go wrong. Enjoy. Let's go over to the acquisitions basket. The first thing that was acquired was the acquisitions basket. And I am way, 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 way too excited about this. I have been wishing for a like handwoven basket for the longest time because I like to go foraging, especially in spring. And for that, having a basket like this is perfect. And I am going to love carrying this around with me during my hikes. This was a birthday present because I had my birthday in the meantime. And that is also why this basket is quite full. I always feel like most of my inflow of stash is between December and the end of February because in December it's Christmas and then it, in February it's my birthday. Then we have a distinct spike in September again when I start planning Christmas projects and the rest of the year it's a bit lower but very rarely zero. But this is not representative of the general yarn quantities that I purchase in any given three week time frame because I cannot knit that much. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what's in here, hopefully without making the camera too shaky because I'm now accidentally touching the table that it's mounted on. Let's start right at the top. This is something that I bought and it's Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the color cardamom. I bought two skeins of the cardamom color and two skeins of the copper color for a gift that I am planning. And I'm not going to say what it's going to be because that is a secret. Um, I think these combine quite well, but I actually decided to go with a different color combination for my present at the end, which I will show to you another time. And Knitting for Olive does this pure silk yarn in a like, relatively light fingering weight. This is 500 meters per 100 gram, and each ball is 50 gram. And as far as I know, this is cruelty-free silk. So the silkworms are allowed to hatch from their cocoons and then the silk is spun afterwards. This is why the silk is not as super shiny as traditional silk. Next we have Drops Baby Merino. As I said, I got a few balls of it to make more color work projects from because I was really happy with it. So I have the gray, I have a Bordeaux red color and I have a sage green, which I think is super pretty and I could also maybe make a different pair of spring mittens out of. And I have a bright yellow. So that is quite a bit of drops that was bought. And additionally, I got a ball of it in this pinky blush color and one in blue. So I have quite a palette of colors to knit color work with now for a while and I am excited to show you what I will make with it. What I also have in here is a ball of drops for Molin. I got this when I got the drops baby merino as well. It was on sale and I want to make probably a ranunculus out of it. It's made from cotton and linen, as far as I know. Let me check. Yes, cotton and linen. 53% cotton and 47% linen. It's quite a rustic yarn, but really not scratchy. You can feel the linen content in it. And I think this is going to make a beautiful light ranunculus that I can wear 
when spring gets warmer. Then I got this beautiful project bag with these feather-like houseplanty leaves for my birthday, which I absolutely adore. And I think my next mitten knitting project will live in here because it's so cute. And I talked about Moonshaf quite a lot in the last episode. And then one of my brothers gave me this skein of Moonshaf Hydra, which is her 100% wool fingering weight superwash merino yarn in the colorway Gaia, which is this lovely bluish green or greenish blue. Let me know in the comments which one of the two you think. I think this is more a green than a blue, but there have been discussions and final judgment is still out on this. And last but not least, I got myself a new tiny crochet hook for beading because I tend to lose them quite often. So it's always good to have a backup. And I got myself a few new, very cheap drops, long round knitting needles when I got the wool that I ordered as well. One extra cute gift that I got for my birthday as well, I have to move my candle for a second, is this yarn ball that my mother-in-law gave me. And it's going to be so useful because my spouse complains about the balls of yarn just rolling around the sofa when I knit while we're watching TV. So this is going to keep that contained, nicely, tidily contained. And it also looks super cute at the same time. And I'm very excited about using it. And that's it from my side for this time. I will see you as soon as I can. I'm still struggling a little bit with making my mind up about a like upload rhythm for this channel. So far I've just been kind of going with the flow, uploading when I have actual stuff to show you because I feel like that's more important than uploading in a set rhythm. But I have realized that these episodes tend to run quite long so um, I don't know, let me know what you prefer. I could put out shorter episodes that maybe contain a few less finished objects but more often or I could have them stay at this length and put them out every three to four weeks when I have more objects to show you all at once. I'm curious about your opinion, let me know in the comments. If you like this video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out videos like this as you just heard at irregular rhythms, but I hope I will see you very soon. Bye!